Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are on the campaign trail today, hitting two different battleground states. The vice president spoke at a National Association of Black Journalists forum in Philadelphia. It comes six weeks after former President Trump appeared at the organization's national convention in Chicago, where he questioned Harris's racial ethnicity. Meanwhile, Trump is holding a town hall in Flint, Michigan. It's his first public event following Sunday's apparent assassination attempt. Last night, the former president spoke out about the incident and blamed the rhetoric of President Biden and Vice President Harris. CBS News campaign reporter Olivia Rinaldi is traveling with the former president in Michigan, and senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe is with the vice president in Pennsylvania. Olivia, I want to start with you. The former president, as we just mentioned, is there in Flint, Michigan. This is his first event since Sunday's second apparent assassination attempt. What is security like at tonight's event? Yeah, good to be with you, Nicole. Security is looking like it's looked for the past two months since the first assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania on July 13th. There's an increase of officers, I noticed, coming into the town even. There was a crush of officers directing traffic to one location. You have to go through several checks before you even get into the parking lot. And then once there, you go through a series of screenings. All of our camera gear gets screened extensively. Our laptops get taken out. This is the thorough measures that the Secret Service is going through today, just two days after that apparent assassination attempt on Sunday. Now, the Trump campaign says Trump is going to continue his campaign schedule this week, which, as we know, includes a stop tomorrow in Uniondale in New York. That's on Long Island. Then he'll continue to Washington, D.C., where he'll hold a few events on anti-Semitism. And he'll cap out the week in Wilmington, North Carolina. So Trump is appearing to go full steam ahead on this campaign schedule as all these questions swirl about his security, his security presence, whether he'll be getting more from the Secret Service. And just voters I've talked to here today tell me that's exactly what they want to see, Nicole. They want to see more of a security presence around the former president and their questions around how this could happen to him again just less than two or rather over two months since the last one. The former president is blaming Democrats and their rhetoric for Sunday's incident. His running mate, J.D. Vance, also echoed that sentiment today in Michigan. Let's take a listen. It's time to say to the Democrats, to the media, to everybody that has been attacking this man and trying to censor this man for going on 10 years, cut it out or you're going to get somebody killed. Today, the White House rejected those accusations. How is the Trump campaign responding, and can we expect them to continue to play this up despite some of that pushback? Well, Nicole, tonight is expected to be about the economy and the focus to be on the auto industry. But I suspect just knowing this campaign and covering Donald Trump, that's likely going to be one of the first questions, first things he talks about is this apparent assassination attempt. And his campaign is really doubling down that the rhetoric from the Democrats and the Biden administration is leading to this political violence. That is what they're saying on their side, even though the White House is denying it and people are asking to tamp down the rhetoric. Uh, they're really pushing forward uh, with that notion that saying that Trump is a threat to democracy is what is fueling these political attacks against him. So I suspect that Trump will talk about that at some uh, length tonight. He is talking with Sarah Huckabee Sanders, that is his former White House press secretary and the governor of Arkansas, current governor of Arkansas. They'll be having that conversation behind me in just a short little while. And Ed, Vice President Kamala Harris addressed the National Association of Black Journalists in Philadelphia. What is she saying about this incident involving the former president? Well, turns out, Nicole, they spoke this afternoon and she explained to journalists how that conversation went. Take a listen. I checked on to see if he was okay. Yeah. And um, I told him what I have said publicly. I, there's no place for political violence in our country. I am in this election and in this race for many reasons, including to fight for our democracy. And in a democracy, uh, there, there is no place for political violence. We can and should have healthy debates and discussion and disagreements. Notably, Harris was asked whether or not she feels safe under Secret Service protection, and she said she does. But she pointed out that there are many Americans who may not feel safe right now, given the rhetoric of 
former President Trump, given the things that he enacted when he was president and what he's threatening to do again. She specifically called out LGBTQ people, immigrants, and women as the kinds of Americans who may not feel safe right now, given the things that are being set out on the campaign trail or that Donald Trump is proposing to do or has done when he served as president. And, of course, there was a lot of controversy when former President Trump spoke with NABJ. I remember very clearly because I was there. But how did that set the stage for Harris's interview today? And what did she address in this interview? Did we learn anything new? Well, she faced a few different questions. She's going to probably get some heat for how she answered questions regarding the war in the Middle East, for example, suggesting again that she stands by Israel's right to defend itself, but insisted that there needs to be a resolution to the uh, situation regarding hostages, suggested that there needs to be a ceasefire, said she supports withholding 2,000-pound bombs from Israel, but then struggled to really explain what exactly more she would be able to do to help the Palestinian people. There was also a question about reparations and whether or not she, as president, would ever use executive authority to establish a national commission to explore possibly paying reparations. She suggested no, that it's ultimately up to Congress to do so, and that there are other ways to help the black community across the country, in part, she suggested, by enacting her economic policies. And then she was asked about what President Trump and J.D. Vance and others have said about what happened in Springfield, Ohio, and she gave one of her more spirited answers. Take a listen. This is not new in terms of where it's coming from. You know, whether it is refusing to rent to people, rent to black families, whether it is taking out a full page ad in the New York Times against five innocent black and Latino teenagers, the Central Park Five, calling for their execution, referring to the first black press in the United States with a lie, birther lies. The American people deserve, and I do believe, want better than this. So uh, that, again, earned one of the more spirited answers from her. It seemed as if she was anticipating and wanted to talk uh, about her concerns with the rhetoric used and the fact that, as she pointed out, schools in Springfield, Ohio, as you know, Nicole, having been there in recent days, were shut down amid threats. She called out the fact that, at least at some of those schools, it was picture day. And that young students had shown up in their best clothing, all prepared and excited to take their photos, only to have to leave school because of the threats that had been phoned into that community. Yeah, and they have Ohio State troopers posted outside of some of those schools today in light of those threats. Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much, as well as Olivia Rinaldi. We appreciate both of you for joining us. And a quick programming note, join us early on October 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern for a special vice presidential debate edition of America Decides, live from New York City. CBS News will moderate the debate and bring you coverage all evening long.